Today is December 6th and this is the tough part about I guess being done harvest is you have a lot of odd jobs that you kind of got to get caught up on that you kind of maybe neglected for a little while and today is one of those days. So my plan today is to finish drying corn. There's just a little bit in the top of the top dry. I just haven't had time to quite uh, finish drying it. And I ran out of wet corn, so it's kind of stopped and I need to put a little bit more corn in it to finish the drying process. So what I just finished doing here on the panel was to transfer dry corn out of the bottom of the dryer into the overhead that will then put it back into the top of the dryer <laughs> that will give us enough corn to let us fire up the burners and finish drying the corn. So we'll put that a little bit up there, up top. We'll do uh, probably, uh, we'll double the, uh, the time, uh, the dry time, and then we'll do manually like dry and hold. It's a manual way to kind of just keep all the corn up there. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna do that right now. And then I could say I'm done drying corn. I might end up helping a friend of mine. He has got a fair bit of corn left over uh, and trying to get his drying system set up, but I'm not sure it's gonna get done in a, the time he needs to get done. And he's got a field really close to us here. So I might help him out drying that field for him so he doesn't have to worry about the stress around that one. So I'm just gonna get everything cleaned out here and finished out so that if we have to dry a little bit for him, we can do that. So when we go to dry the last batch, we actually go down to here and you can see underneath it says dry and hold. So we're going to put that on. So it's got a timer for how long we want to cool it. It's 15 minutes right now. I'll probably bump that up to a half hour and uh, that should be good. So I'm going to hopefully fire up the dryer. Turn the Load system to auto. Oh, and I got started on my panel over here. That sounds good. I don't know. I might have to go up and bang it. I think we're good. It just, uh, the bin on load has not pulled, the, oh, it's finally pulling some ants there. So it just looked like it wasn't flowing dry corn, but it is flowing dry corn. So. We're good. So we'll just wait for the top of the drying chamber to fill. And then technically the fan and burner should kick on and we will be able to finish drying the last little bit of corn. Because we're trying to uh, dry the last batch and we're gonna try to dry the whole chamber, not just that kind of outer third ring, uh, we are gonna take the dryer off. It says time and temp. We're gonna go actually to time only mode 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 and we'll set the dry timer to uh yeah 55 set for 55 minutes right now okay so we'll 50 minutes so that's about time and a half to be safe and we'll do that and we should be good all these little jobs that get put off to the side during harvest uh kind of when you band-aid equipment together you're kind of just like the end is in, the end is in sight and you just want to kind of get to the end so you kind of use every little bit of know-how and uh, ingenuity to keep stuff going and band-aid stuff together well that's kind of what we do <laughs> during the last couple weeks of harvest it seems like and then we get to this period after all the crops harvested i call it the harvest hangover uh, two, two, for two reasons. One is that I felt like I partied for like four weeks straight and now I'm really tired. And the other thing too is, is it just, there's so many different things to do that uh, all these kind of things that hang over your head uh, because you patch stuff together to get done harvest. So uh, starting on some of these jobs and drying the last little batch of corn is one of them. Not that it's a difficult job, just needs to get done. And then I gotta empty out the inside of the bin as well. I don't think I'll conquer that one today because it actually is kind of sunny out and a little nicer. So I might try to clean up equipment. 
which is the other thing that always hangs over your head because uh, stuff got dirty this year uh, because conditions were crappy and it needs cleaned up so we only got about uh, looks like about 16 minutes left here of drying and then it will cool and shut itself down so I think we'll just go for a walk to the shop and look at getting some stuff cleaned up. Once we get the drying done I have to actually go inside the drying chamber and clean that all out. I'll take you in for that. I think it looks a little messy and it's going to be pretty dirty so I'm not really looking forward to that but such is life. Clean up. So much to clean up. The uh, wind is picked up and uh, I'm losing my ambition to clean equipment in this cooler weather so I might end up cleaning out that corn drying bin after all. We'll have to see. I didn't really film any of my disc grip and I don't know why I didn't. I think I just got sitting in the tractor cab and enjoying kind of some mindless work that I never really thought about grabbing my camera. But as you can see, my shop is filthy because of that disc gripper. We ended up having to disc grip uh, or till about 130 acres, 140 acres because uh, 110 of it was compaction. Uh, we had to get some chicken manure spread. I got the custom guy to come in and do it so we could get it done in a timely manner. And it was a little questionable conditions. And I'm glad I did it because when I kind of went through those spots where the spreader tracks were, it was uh, coming up kind of chunky, which means it was kind of compacted. So. I'm glad I did it. It's gonna make for a little bit more work this spring. Uh, and it's, you know, we are trying to do strip till, but um, I also firmly believe that we have to set ourselves up uh, to get a good crop each year. And sometimes it means we have to use different forms of tillage. We don't plow, um, but you know, this disc ripper is pretty aggressive. It's got some pretty big teeth on it here. As you can see, so they do a pretty uh, pretty aggressive job. So as I said, I don't like doing it, but I'm, I'm a, as I said, a firm believer in making sure that we have the ground in good conditions uh, for next year so that we can set ourselves up for a good crop because we can't afford any crop failures because margins are pretty tight. So that's why we still have some of this stuff around. So we will strip till we got the joker to do vertical tillage. Uh, we got the disc ripper to do some other tillage like that. So those are my kind of three tools I have from a tillage standpoint. And we also have the strip freshener, which I just call strip till. So those are kind of a couple methods of tillage is strip till, disc ripping or full tillage I call it. And then the vertical till where we have the joker and just try to work a couple inches deep. So anyways, I gotta clean up this mess in here. I'm not done with this yet. I wanna do a couple spots yet, but today with the mild weather, it's just uh, gonna to be too goopy on top. So we'll just uh, pick our time that we can do it. Monday, December 9th. And last week, Friday, wasn't a very productive day. Well, it looks like this week's weather is a little, bit of a roller coaster uh, with rain we had yesterday and it kind of last night that melted the snow, a little bit that we had, and it's gonna get kind of mild here for a couple days, and then it's gonna get cold near the end of the week. So I talked about the harvest hangover there on Friday, and in my one video, uh, you'll see where I was in the generator room here in the sea can, showing you the oil leaking out of the generator. And we'll just give you an update on that because I should check it before we try to run it here to move some grain around. But it kind of got oil all over the wall there, all over the floor. And uh, I will clean that up, but not right now. So the issue and you can probably see it, this right here. So what this line does here is it's uh, a lubrication line for the turbo. So this is 
the turbo on the motor. And to really simplify it, uh, the turbo just gives the, the engine more power. It has something to do with air and stuff like that. Uh, I probably can't do a good job explaining it, but basically, if you have a diesel motor that's turbocharged, it has more power. So, there's uh, a couple fins in these that turn and this oil line here lubricates it. So it comes off the engine block here, goes up and then it goes through the turbo and kind of drains down back into the bottom of the crankcase for the engine. So that blew up or cracked and that's why there was oil everywhere. And I will, as I said, clean it up with uh, some brake cleaner and a whole bunch of other stuff and get all this oil cleaned up, but uh, it made a mess. But what I'm going to do is just check the oil to make sure it's good before we start it up. Good to go. So uh, I was gonna clean out the, well, the dryer, the top of the dryer chamber is empty now. And I'm gonna clean out the bottom part. It looks like I'm gonna help a friend of mine out. They got a, a fair bit left over or left to do. And I think uh, time's getting away so they wanna kinda get some stuff done. So I'm going to help them dry corn and that probably will happen this week when it freezes up. So I'm going to empty the dryer today of dry corn so that the overhead will be empty, the dryer bin will be empty, and I can dry their corn and then just ship out everything that's in the bottom of the dryer and we'll be able to keep track of that's their corn because all my corn is in my own bin. So we're gonna do that this morning. Oh, brutal. Oh. So, maybe you can tell by my lovely dusty appearance, I did get the bin emptied. There's a lot of finds in there. Uh, what finds are are just small broken pieces of a kernel. And uh, we're only allowed to have so many in a sample when we ship it. Uh, if we have too much, it gets downgraded. And there are some, uh, requirements by end users to have only so many so if you have too many fines they can actually reject your load so there's more in there than i like but um they're a little different this year than typical they're not a real coarse uh piece of kernel they're really fine almost like a dust and i honestly think most of that have, would have blown out the back of the combine this year but because the corn was so wet uh higher in moisture it kind of stuck to the kernel and it kind of went through the whole process so as I was loading or unloading the bin and loading another one or transferring it to a storage bin out of the dryer, I ran the aeration fan which blows air up through the mass of grain and hopefully that blows some of the dust out. I don't know, we'll see. Anyways, I'm gonna go get cleaned up. <laughs> 